I feel like if you're gonna sell novelty buttons, fruit should be at the top of the list. Hi there, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dines for Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm making another dress. The other day, if you watched it, I did a thrift haul where I found the perfect material to make a dress out of. It's this material right here. Does it look like it could be a tablecloth? Absolutely. Does it also look like it belongs in your grandma's kitchen windows? Also, yes. It was $4 for, look at all this, all this fabric. There has to be at least three meters of fabric in this for four dollars you can't go to fabric and buy that unless you buy the really cheap stuff which i did one time and uh it's not worth it the material which is trash that's why i thrift a lot of my fabrics or just make them out of bed sheets the dress that i wanted to make today is going to be a frankenstein of sorts meaning i'm taking two patterns that i already have and combining them together the first pattern if you haven't guessed it is uh this top here this is the clay blouse that you can find on mood fabrics society mood society i think that's what it's called it is a free pattern that you can download the pdf and print it out cut the pattern up and then make your own shirt if you'd like to i do have a full video about how i made this shirt if you're interested in knowing how i made this in this video i'm not really going to be doing step by step by step this is more of a can i make this dress let's see how long it takes me and if i have a mental breakdown hopefully not the other pattern i am going to use is the bottom half of the mccall's say it with me 7948 dress that i use for everything and basically it's just like three rectangles that you sew together and then you gather. So technically I don't even need it and I might not even use it. I just really want to make a dress that has like a button up on it because I think that'd be really cute. So without further ado, I think that's pretty much all I can say for this intro. I'm going to probably cut out all the pieces off camera because cutting out the pieces is my least favorite part of a sewing project. So I'm going to cut these pieces out and maybe just show you a few little clips here and there that I don't think I'm going to get that in depth about cutting out these pieces and then I'm going to cut back and we're gonna start assembling the top I think we're gonna get the top done and then we're gonna do the bottom of the skirt so I'm gonna go and do that and then come back in a day or two to start actually making the dress so I have to first iron this before I can even cut out the pattern pieces just because it's a little wrinkly like it's not bad but it does make a little bit of a difference so I'm gonna iron this first and then I can cut out the pieces When it comes to this print, I don't really think it matters which way I do it. I mean, I know there's a, a certain way you're supposed to like cut on the grain. I don't really follow that. I know I should, but I don't. If you look at it, they're not all going in one direction. You got one going this way, then you got one going this way, then you got one going this way. They're literally all over the place. So I don't really think it matters. I think maybe once I start cutting it, I'll just like cut it in the same direction, like cut a piece here, piece here, cut a piece here, and then, you know, this is for the bottom stuff. I'm really excited to share that for this project, I got to use my new sewing shears that I received from LDH Scissors. I've been using dollar store scissors for the longest time and upgrading to professional cutting shears is really exciting for me. LDH Scissors specializes in high quality sewing tools. They have a 10 year warranty and sharpening support for their products. Their brand stands for love, dedication, and happiness. They are a family owned and female led company. They also donate 5% of every order to women's shelters in Canada. Cutting out pattern pieces is typically my least favorite part of a project, but using these scissors definitely changes that. So I just got here at Fabricland and I'm really hoping that I can find some really cute fruit buttons. If I can't find any fruit buttons, I think I might go for like a purpley cranberry color. I think, I think that would really complement the dress a lot or maybe a nice green. We'll have to see. I really want fruit buttons. Like I really want fruit buttons. So I first checked out their novelty button section. They had like a few that were kind of fruit themed, but it just wasn't what I'm looking for. I'm looking for more pears, grapes. Apples were kind of cute, but I didn't want all apples. They didn't have any fruit buttons. Well, they did. They had strawberries and then they had apples. And I think apples is on the print, but I wanted more like pears, grapes. But I think I'm gonna go to a Michael's right now. I remember a long time ago, they had like all these really cool assorted buttons. Maybe they don't have them anymore. Maybe they do. So I'm gonna go to Michael's, see if they have any cool buttons there. And if not, then later on this week, I'm gonna have to come back here and just get some simple buttons, I think. I really, really want fruit buttons. I want this dress to be over the top, but 
still subtle. I want to make sure that there's no fruit buttons out there that I don't have to buy online because there's probably some online, but I'm not going to buy anything online right now. So that's the plan. At Michael's, they didn't have the novelty buttons that I was looking for. They had this type of buttons, but they were just a little too cartoonish and it didn't look like they had a variety of fruit. Now, although I did not find the buttons I needed to buy, I did go to the Dollarama and I bought some more faux wood paneling so I can finish up the one wall that is by my sewing area. This area right here, cause that's, that's that, it stops and it just turns blue. So I want this just to continue over here. I think it looks really good and I really want to finish like my whole entire room with this faux wood paneling contact paper. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, hopefully one day, but uh, this makes me very, very happy. Okay, so I folded this part here, which is gonna be like where I'm gonna put all the buttons and stuff like that. So I folded that in and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iron it so it's nice and crispy. Then, uh, do you know what that was? Do you know what that fuzz was? It was from that dress that I made out of a tablecloth, that checkerboard one, it's still everywhere. Like it's still everywhere. So now I'm gonna iron it. And then I'm also just gonna give it like a nice, I think top stitch like along the edge here, just so it stays nice and flat. I think I did that for the other one. I don't know if it told me to do it in the instructions, but I did it anyways, because I really do like that look. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. And then what I can do is I can actually do the French seam on here. And what the French seam is, you're actually supposed to pin them wrong side to wrong side. So like how you would wear it, is how you pin it together and then you fold it inside out and then you sew it again and that is so that way you don't have any raw seams on the inside and this really helps if you don't have a serger like myself so anyways let me go iron this and then i can sew it all together So I just finished doing the French seam. This is what it looks like on the outside. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So there's no raw edges or anything. That way I can put it in the washing machine and it's not going to fray on me, which is great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go print off the collar part because that's the one part that I lost. Also, it's the smallest part. So I probably only have to print off one page, hopefully. So I think I need A5 and B5. So it looks like it's page seven and page 12. Okay, so if I go file, print, seven and 12. Now that I have uh, nice sewing scissors, I can use my old sewing scissors as paper cutting scissors. So that's what it looks like. I probably could get two pieces, so I'm gonna fold it. Probably should iron this, so let me go iron that. Also, I have to change the battery. I finished up the collar. The top is like surprisingly almost done, which in my head I'm thinking, what did I do wrong to get this done so quickly? <laughs> Step. I had to take the whole top apart, the whole top. <laughs> so what I have to do now is I have to attach the collar onto here. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I am gonna do the sleeves today. But other than that, I can't add the buttonholes because I don't know what size of button I'm getting. So I don't wanna make the holes too big or too small depending on the size of the buttons because I don't have the buttons yet. So that's gonna have to get done tomorrow when I buy the buttons. I'm gonna add the collar on now. Now that it's pinned, I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew it up. Okay, so I put the collar on. It's not looking too bad. I need to work on the sleeves still because they're still really, really long, but it's lining up pretty, pretty good. If I need to, like once the dress is done, I might take in a little bit more on the sides. Not 100% sure yet. Wednesday, me and my sister went to Lens Mills in Stony Creek. They have a lot of fabric. They have way more fabric than Fabricland has. I mean, they even have their Halloween stuff out. Like, oh my goodness, if I could afford all this fabric, you know, I'd be buying it and making a ton of dresses. They had the same brand of buttons as Fabricland, but they didn't have fruit. They had really cute vegetable ones. Then I also had to check out their fabrics. Even though I didn't need any today, I just had to look at them. What's he doing up there? I saw it. Oh boy. It looks like it could be a car. It's a pumpkin. <laughs> Can we trade you our car for the pumpkin yeah, car? Yeah, my 2019 Ford Echo Sports. For a pumpkin car, Brittany? It's a freaking pumpkin on wheels. Um, I picked up an iron. There's a self-clean button. I mean, it has to be better than the iron that I currently use that keeps leaking on me, so. It is 
Thursday now. I keep thinking it's Friday. It's not Friday, because if it was Friday, I'd be watching Stranger Things right now and not filming. Yesterday, as you saw, me and my sister, we went to Lens Mills. I was looking for buttons. They had really, 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 really adorable buttons, and they had those really cute vegetable buttons. Unfortunately, my project is fruit themed, so I need fruit buttons, and I did not find any, and I am like really disappointed because I feel like I've seen them. I feel like if you're gonna sell novelty buttons, fruit should be at the top of the list. I saw police car buttons, I saw truck buttons, I saw camper buttons, but not like a banana button or a grape button. Like, I don't understand. But I did find something. I found this iron on the side of the road. If you've been watching my sewing videos, you might have picked up on the fact that the iron that I currently have drives me insane. It's this iron here. Put your water in here. Three settings for steam. One setting is off. And sometimes... That's kind of scary. The reason why I'm saying that's kind of scary is because there's no water in here and I'm pretty sure there was water in here the last time I used it. The water, if I put it down like this, sometimes just spill out when it was off. Also like, you know, usually when I go thrifting, I'm always like, hey, I'm looking for like a new iron. I am still looking for like a mini iron. This one is a nice professional iron, but I noticed it because of this nice color it has. It does need a good cleaning and these go upwards to 50 bucks. It's so funny is because every time I'm like, found it on the side of the road, I feel like I'm giving off fell off a truck vibes. You know that saying where someone's like it fell off a truck Meaning that they kind of like stole it or they took it from somewhere and every time I'm like I found it on the side of the road I feel like I give up those like I fell off a truck vibes I did not wander into someone's house and just take the iron It literally was on the side of the road enough with the iron talk Let's get back into button talk did go back to fabric land today And it was so funny because it's the last day that I can use my fabric land card because tomorrow it expires I think I only have to pay for $15 to renew it, but I just don't have the $15 right now. The buttons that I went with, these buttons here, I think it matches the green that's in the fruit, like say like this pear right here. Picked up like a medium size button because here's the thing, I am not giving up on finding fruit buttons. In the sense that I need to get this project done in two days for the video to come out, I don't have any more time. I've run out of time looking for buttons because tomorrow is July 1st, which is Canada Day, but to me it is Stranger Things Part today and that is what I will be celebrating is Stranger Things. But everything is closed tomorrow and today obviously I have to sew this project so I can't be driving around looking for them. And then while I was there as well I did pick up these frog buttons uh, for my sister because she really likes frogs and I told her about them and she's like why didn't you buy them for me? So when I was there today I picked up some frog buttons. I feel like this video is like all over the place. It started off as a sewing video and then I redid my room and then I did a vlog kind of yesterday of all the places that I went to and now it's back to sewing. I got the top done. I need to do the buttons on here and then I have have to add the skirt. I still have all this fabric, so I have to cut a piece out for the skirt, and then I have to gather it in and do the hem on that, and then I have to attach it onto here. I just have to figure out where I want the skirt part of the dress to start. I'm gonna figure all that out, and then when that's all figured out, I will uh, turn the camera back on. I did the button holes. I haven't added the buttons onto it yet, so I'm gonna do that later. But what I did is I made the skirt part and basically it's just a gigantic rectangle sewn together. That's it. That's it for the skirt giant rectangle. I went around the top part of the skirt. I did that zigzag stitch over the dental floss. That way I can gather it. Look at how easy it is to gather it. Like it's so much easier. So now I have to gather this and I have to attach it onto the top. But yeah, the main reason why I didn't do the buttons because I made four buttonholes but I don't think I'm gonna use four buttons. Meaning I only needed to buy one pack of buttons and I bought two pack of buttons. You can never go wrong with buying too many buttons. It's always better to have more buttons th than less because if you need the more buttons, you don't have to go back to the store and get them. I have the opposite problem today, which is fine. So now I just need to figure out how to attach the top to the bottom. Once again, this is my very first attempt at making a button up dress. So whatever mistakes I make in this project, I will learn for next time because I really like this idea of a dress. We'll see how it goes. This is like my first attempt. If it's great, great. If not, I'll I'll, I'll fix it somehow.
I ended up making it three times too big. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I thought, oh, if I add the skirt and I ruche it in, we'll just bring it in. It is way too big. So what I have to do is I have to take the whole skirt off. I'm not really happy about that. I need to take it in like a good two inches all the way down. Remember when I said, hey, this project is actually going really well. When am I gonna mess up? I messed up. I had to take the whole top apart. The whole top is disassembled. There's the collar. So I made it too small. So I went from making it too big to making it too small. I ended up doing something completely different than what I thought I was gonna do. But on the sides, what I did is I just added an extra panel that goes underneath my arm. I know I should have pinned it, I should have tried it on, then I should have cut it. When something like this like catastrophic happens in a sewing project, that will remind me for the rest of my life not to do it ever again. It's like, yes, you could be doing it the proper way your entire life and that's fine. But for me, the only way I'm gonna learn if I make the biggest mistake of my life. I've learned my lesson. I've learned it. I'm moving on. I'm okay. I might have cried a little bit, but I'm composed somewhat. Still have a little bit of rage in me, but it's okay. Moving on. Everything will be fine. We're gonna get it done today. So this one looks like underneath the sleeve. It's not too bad. I mean, like because of the checkerboard, I feel like it's not gonna be as noticeable. I did have to take apart my French seam because I needed a little bit more space on my shoulders just to, you know, I needed more space. So I took apart the French seam. I'm not redoing the French seam because the French seam takes like double the amount of like seam allowance you're gonna need kind of like on a project so say like you need like a quarter of an inch of seam allowance you're gonna need a half inch of seam allowance because you have to fold it and do it twice I'm leaving it it's fine I'll just hand wash it until I get a serger and then I'll serge it up because I have a few other dresses that I've left like this that also need to get serged so it's not a big deal I'm now gonna add the skirt back onto it and it's gonna be what it's gonna be if it's still a little too big on me I'll put a belt on it I've done it before it is what it is so I'm just gonna add the skirt back on to here and then I can put the collar back on and then I can add the buttons and then I'll be done The dress is done. The first half of the dress making process was going swimmingly. I'm like, what could go wrong? And then it all came crashing down in a big fiery crash fire. So basically I, I cut too much off. So I had to add more on. Fun times. And I'll never make that mistake again. Hopefully. I think it actually looks really cute. And to be quite honest, I really do like these green buttons. Like I still would like to find some fruit buttons, but uh, these green ones are actually really, really cute. And I'm okay with that. So if I never find the fruit buttons, these actually look really cute. Like I really like these buttons. Surprisingly, like, not surprisingly. I knew I would like them. It's the reason I picked them out, but I like them more than I thought. Problem is that I'm always seeing these dresses online I really like them but I don't think that they fit my body shape as nicely as it could. I think that's the thing is that the way my body is shaped I have a little bit of a curve to it and wearing like really boxy clothes just makes me look bigger than I actually am but like it's just so cute. But if I wear it with a belt I think it's fine. In the end it does look really cute and I think sometimes in my process if I make like a big mistake it kind of sours my thoughts on the garment. I'm debating if I want to add belt loops or do I want to add like a ribbon kind of casing like for like a drawstring so that way I could like just cinch it in if I want it cinched in and then I can leave it if I don't and I could still add a belt if I wanted to. I didn't add pockets because it's just an extra necessity that I don't like doing. Do I enjoy pockets? Yes. Do I like adding pockets into my garments? No. <laughs> So I didn't. But other than that, I think this is a perfect summer dress and I just need to get over the fact that like, oh, it's just not perfect. Like it's still cute. I still would like to wear it. I think I give this project a seven out of 10, minusing the three points for the uh, chaotic mess that happened last night when I was making this dress. And that will do it for this video. If you're new to my channel, like sewing, crafting, but mainly thrifting, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram and TikTok, which is the same fancy dinosaur tea party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.